Brandon, we are talking about gear today. Uh, I thought this was a fun topic just because we have a lot of beginner riders on mm -hmm. the channel. We wanted to talk about gear. The gear that you and I wear have changed over time. Yes. A little bit. Yes. Um, why don't you talk me through, because obviously you come from a racing background. Uh, you wore one-piece suits most of the time. Most of the time. When did you start kind of riding more on street, and what did you start wearing when you were riding more on street? So, actually, I can back it up even further to what I was riding on the track. One of the first times my parents trusted me to pack my own gear, uh, I forgot it. I had the bag. I didn't have the gear. Um, so we had to go to Walmart and we got a life vest, um, a long jacket, some dirt bike boots that we found at Walmart and some knee pads like from a skateboard. And I got to race with that. Uh, what? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Road race? Uh-huh. On a TTR 90. They let you do that? Yeah. It was a different time. It was a different time. That's crazy. It was approved. Um, <laughs> I didn't crash, but <laughs> that's, it was that's a one-time thing. That's actually crazy. I didn't <laughs> know about the story. <laughs> you can ask my How dad about How old were you? <sighs> like eight or nine or something? Yeah, like eight maybe. Yeah. It was one of the very first times my parents trusted that's me to super pack funny, my though. own stuff. Pack your stuff, you just completely forget. Yeah, I brought my helmet and, my, that's, just, yeah. and the bag, but none of the gear that was supposed to be in the bag. Wow, no gloves, no suit, no boots, not just helmet. Mm-hmm. So that's where it started for you. That's where your squidding started. Those were my squidding days. It was the one and only time I was allowed to do it when I was a kid. And then I got yeah. ferociously yelled at. But back to your question on the street. Um, when I started riding street, it was shoes, pants, uh, helmet, gloves, and a jacket. That was about it. The things that we'd definitely buy were the jacket, the gloves, and the helmet. I just yeah. used my race helmet, though. So then pants and shoes are just street pants and shoes. Yeah. Yeah. That was the bare minimum that my parents, because I was living with my parents at the time, were, yeah. right, now you can go out. Otherwise, yeah. it was it was mainly just to, if you crashed on the road, you're probably not ending up so well anyways. So just minimize the road rash is yeah. basically the theory behind that. So that that was basically what we did. It's not the same with what I do right now. <laughs> yeah. Now I'm wearing pants with pads in them. Uh-huh. Proper Sli shoes. Slide-resistant pants, I might add, also yep. the revs you have, yeah. And the uh, ankle protection Mm -hmm. shoes um jacket gloves and helmet do i you, still prefer preferably i don't know about you preferably uh, i prefer leather jackets over cloth jackets i do too but it's just so damn it's, hot yeah we live in I, texas i get it I have we to live in texas. textile yeah yeah no 100 no. it's so hot but when it becomes cooler i'd probably end up getting that yeah. just because i feel it feels better. Yeah, I feel like I'm being hugged a bit more. Yeah, it's instead a of getting stuck, because the cloth, the cloth ones you do kind of get stuck with that liner. But, yeah, uh, leather ones, it just you're being hugged. Do you still uh, find yourself ever riding? Maybe you don't wear all of your gear. Yes, yeah. I know there was a, when I did the my ride on the H2. Uh, I left with the intention of just riding pretty much around the block. So I was never gonna do anything stupid. It was just meh. You know, type, type thing. I then ended up full squid moding <laughs> and doing everything I shouldn't do. Uh, uh, undisclosed speeds with my tennis shoes. Um, yeah. Not not greatest looking back on it. Um, I try not to do that. Yeah. But it still does happen. If I, yeah. if I don't have the intention of doing something, like if I'm just going down to the store or something like that, or, you know, the gas station coming back, I probably won't put my full riding gear on. It'll yeah. probably just be... The jacket, gloves, and helmet. Yeah. But those are the bare minimum necessities that I'll always do. I'll always have pants on just because I only wear pants anyways. Yeah. So. I've never seen you in shorts. <clears throat> yeah. I think ever the time I've known you. Some yeah. pale legs down there. <laughs> I never want to see him. There's Don't ever show him. Paleness. <laughs> you know, what's funny is the only time I find myself not wearing most, if not all of my gear, and this is a bad habit I have, is like if I, if I have a bike that I'm working on, I just need to test it. I mm -hmm. just need to like start it up or something. I have a really bad habit of like, I will go up and down the street, just no gear at all. And I'm like literally yeah. as I was finishing my Daytona, I went up and down the street, I was wearing shorts and like no shirt, yep. sandals, like nothing. Just like, I just went up and down the block. And my wife gets on to me, she's like, you can always have uh, a TBI, a traumatic brain injury. Mm -hmm. Like you need to, like if you jump on a motorcycle, helmet must go on. And so from now on, I'm like, she has a point, like I'll go shirtless, but I will need to be wearing a helmet, you know? <laughs> Because I just, you know, it's funny. I, it, it feels 
weird to me to go out with no gear. It feels really weird to jump on a bike if I'm actually going to go for a ride. Yeah. Not not up and down the block, like if I'm testing a bike or whatever. It feels really weird to not wear a jacket or anything else. Mm -hmm. Like, you feel I like know, missing something. I know a lot of guys, like, they'll ride a scooter and just, like, oh, it's a scooter, like, half helmet, t shirt, nothing. I'm like, yeah, well, we saw but. a guy earlier today was. Oh, my God. Nothing. Just, he had pants on. He had pants. He was wearing a wife beater, and that was about it. Yeah. And he was enjoying, I mean, he was enjoying life. Don't get me wrong. He was enjoying <laughs> life. But. If something happens. Yeah. He's it's about to not enjoy mind. life. My thing is, is, I've caught a pebble in the arm. Dude, it hurts. That hurts. Dude, I've hit a I'm grasshopper with my knuckles here. And I'm it small, I was like, man. ow. I'm small. It hurts. <laughs> I don't like it. I need a nice layer of bubble wrap. Yeah. That's all I need. It feels better. <laughs> One thing I've started wearing, and you've seen me wearing it, is my airbag vest. Uh, that's been a new See, thing that I've been starting wearing, and I'm really happy with it. And honestly. I'm glad you brought that up because that is still, I guess I'm stuck in my old way. So I can actually tell you, back in 2010, actually. <clears throat> 13 years ago. Yeah, was actually the first time I put a chest protector on. Wow. Before then, mm -mm. it was just back protector when I was racing. You didn't like it, the way it felt? Is that why? No, it just, just didn't, it do, didn't it. do it. And all of a sudden, now it was a thing, and I was like, now it's weird. I don't want to wear it. All yeah. Stuff. Now I'm always wearing it. But now the airbag to me is like, no. Yeah. For me, that's a leap unless it's already built in. That's for me, it's just a leap that I won't take right now. But you saw our friend at mm -hmm. the track, Santiago, who he yard sailed his V4. And he had his airbag go He off. wore his airbag. He didn't have a scratch on him. He, he was did. He was perfectly fine. Um, And... You know, it's possible he would have been perfectly fine without the airbag. And you and I have both crashed on track plenty of times where yep. we don't need an airbag and we're fine. But mm -hmm. I like having that extra layer. I think especially on street, you know, the, the chances of you getting punctured or hit with something sharper or smaller through a rib or through a collarbone. Oh, you know, like mm -hmm. it just a bag of air is not going to help with the piercing. It actually does. Really? Yeah, it actually does with some of the piercing forces, and it just helps reduce some of those forces. Right. But it's missing impact for sure. Yes, it helps a ton. Impact, yeah. But piercing, yeah, if you, if you have a nail, that's yeah. not going to help. <laughs> but, you know, I'm talking, I'm, what I'm Jesus. thinking about is like a, a handlebar, you oh. know, where it's like it's not going to pierce necessarily, but it's a small localized it's gonna force. It's, it's going to hurt, hurt like a motherfucker, you know? That's true. And that's going to help disperse that force. And I started looking into it, and, you know, I look at it this way. It was like 800 bucks for the street one. I think it was like a thousand for the track one because I got one of each because the street one, as you saw the other day, it doesn't really work with the track suit. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just way too, I need the other one that's a little more track oriented. It's pricey, but I think about what would happen if I crash and like I snap my collarbone or I break some ribs like, huh? You just get to sit like that for six months. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather just pay 100 bucks and not have to be like that for six months. It's fair. It's not nice. For me, all of my injuries have been to my lower extremities, and they haven't made anything yeah. for that. If they did like an airbag for that, I'd probably do that before I did the one for the chest. So the, I don't know why. the airbag that I got, it goes all the way down to the hips, but it doesn't go to the legs. Yeah. They, yeah. I, they haven't figured that out yet. Yeah. Eh. <laughs> There's not much you can do, but I, I don't know. Um, again, I may just be stuck in my old ways. Yeah. It is cool to see, and I love the technology, and I love how they're putting it in such small packages yeah. to be used by riders, because it is something. But for me personally, I, I don't see myself making the jump, at least within the near future. Yeah. Within the you know following years. One so. thing I thought was cool is, you know, these airbag suits, they tend to feel a little more lightweight than all the bulky padding, because mm -hmm. they'll puff up when they're ready to use. When they're not ready to use, they just feel like cloth they don't feel like much at all yeah so i tried the track one on with my others with my suit on i was like oh my god it's like it's nice because you don't have to run a back protector anymore you just run that you don't need a chest protector you just run that it's nice you know it's just a little a little more movement i like it yeah. I, I like feeling those things though yeah I you feel, feel that i feel naked without those yeah that's uh I've gone that's before. that old school feeling though i think yeah you know? and i've gone out before where i've had a i borrowed someone's suit that had a back protector in it and coincidentally enough i forgot mine but because I didn't have that one that was pressing against my back, yeah. I was like, mm-mm. Yeah, I, I just came yeah. right back. Um, then there was another time where I forgot my chest protector. I was like, mm-mm, I'm missing something here. Yeah. And I couldn't quite figure it out. And just, like, it's just funny because I felt the same way with like my suit had the integrated back protector. Yeah. And it took me a while to get used to it where it's like, I'm still, my back is still protected, yeah. you know? But I was like, but I'm not wearing the whole thing. Yeah, I need the thing. I need the thing, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a little weird. Um, I think you and I rightfully so like when we're on track mostly because it's required but also just because of like what we're doing i take it super serious like if mm -hmm. i if i if i head out of pit and i don't have this buckled up 
I'll just go right back out and buckle it up. I'm there's no way I'm taking that chance because yeah. we've both seen really gnarly shit at the racetrack. Mm -hmm. I saw a guy come off, his helmet came off. Yeah, his head looked like a strawberry. Not good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's again probably just stuck in our old ways. So if they come out with something else new, you'd probably wait to see it. You know, type stuff. Yeah. I think I'm just a little slower than others in yeah. that fact, but it is weird how it changes over time because we look back on the lower levels of the gear that. 90% of people that we see are wearing and we're like why don't you just do this just do this but they're looking at it the same as me to you or you to the next guy yeah and it starts to become of a mentality change because it does take a while to change that mentality for yourself like yeah. you're still getting used to wearing that in your suit mm -hmm. whether it be on street or on track yeah I it's gonna take me a while to to get used to it, and probably a season of doing it and yeah. making sure I do it. Then it just becomes second nature. Yeah. But until you have that habit formed, it it sucks because you just you don't look at it the same. Yeah. But. And that's it's, it's hard for me to understand the guys that go out like we saw that guy today, just no gear at all, no yeah. helmet, nothing. The people that don't wear anything, I definitely don't understand. I don't. I don't, get I don't that. understand. That. It's something. Just put something on the, a helmet at the bare minimum. Yeah, at least for me, a three quarter helmet. I hate half helmets. Yeah, I know. At least that's, a three quarter helmet. Yeah. At least a three quarter. But you know, it's hard to see. There's there's a lot of guys on YouTube now. Yeah, they'll go out and ride just just t shirts, guns out. They're trying mm -hmm. to look cool, and I'm like, damn man, if you go down. You're not oh, gonna look cool. You're not gonna look cool. Yeah, yeah. you're gonna be whinging. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna be. <laughs> you're gonna look like ground beef. Yeah, it's not gonna be cool. You're gonna be yeah. sitting there spazzing out, crying. Like, yeah, oh, man, and no one wants to see that. No. no one wants to see that. I saw a video of a dude. He was riding a Harley, and uh, he was just wearing a helmet, short shorts. It was a strange video. Nothing else. Helmet and short shorts. Oh. Like I think it was a highway in Los Angeles or Las Vegas. I don't remember. How short were these shorts? Uh, pretty short. You oh. see a lot of man meat. Oh, okay. Good. So he gets up. He's trying to do like a stunt thing on his bike. Like he's going at least 70 miles per hour. Oh, I already see where this is going. Yeah. I see and where he, this is and going. He, st he stands up on the bike and he's trying to ride like a surfboard or something. And this Harley just says, nah. Nah. <laughs> and it just goes like this and just tucks. And the camera turns around and you see him just like he falls and just starts spinning and like sliding on this concrete. I'm like, that dude's probably dead. Honestly, like, I mean. He's going to wish that. Yeah. That's like, for sure. Just his, his, dude, his stuff's just getting you're, vaporized you're, on oh, the ground. Man, you're going to get rubbed raw so deep. Oh, dude. She's gratered yeah. to a new level. Yeah. No, that's not fun. That's no, not fun. I've seen a lot of videos like that. It's and rough. people, those same people will go out with just like, okay, pants. And that's it. Yeah. There's added one more thing. Normal jeans just turn into tissue paper at those speeds. They don't do a goddamn thing. Mm -hmm. They don't do anything. People are like, oh, but I got thick denim. I'm like, denim doesn't, denim doesn't do it. <laughs> do you know how much friction there is at 60 miles per hour on asphalt? Have you just, just go lay down next to asphalt and see that yeah. it's not smooth. It is mm -hmm. not a, mm -hmm. you're getting, <laughs> you're you're che <laughs> it's a cheese grater. Yeah. It is a cheese grater. For sure. It for sure. Cheese suck. grater. Yeah. Here, at home test. Just take a cheese grater to your knee with <laughs> denim jeans on. It's, like, it's going to be worse than that. Yeah. Way worse. Yeah. See how quick your, that cheese grater gets through your jeans. That's yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So, got to have that slide protection there for sure. But, yeah. Anything else you want to say about gear? Ah, dude. It's now from, from what it's evolved to to what it is now. No, not really. It's, again, I'm just stuck in my ways. But yeah. I'm more curious to see about what gear you wear in, like, let's take it outside of the application that we do. We do a lot of road riding. Mm -hmm. What would you think? Cause we're not very experienced in it. What would you do for adventure riding esque stuff? Mm. Like, cause we don't have any mindset. So there's some people that are going to be the exact same levels that we are, but in their category, yeah. we may not enter at that level. One thing that I've always thought about are the motocross guys who they just, they go out, they have like the neck thing, the helmet, but then like, they're just wearing like a Jersey and there's just like, I, you there's nothing uh, and it's like you they wear boots and there's nothing else i'm like wow there's no padding there's like there's nothing so there for me because i i did do dirt for a little while for yeah, me i did too helmet no neck thing i don't like things around my neck <laughs> um gloves elbow pads knee pads because i know i'm going to fall <laughs> and one of those is going to hit the one pebble that's out there yes and it's gonna hurt yeah and then boots and yeah. obviously the pants and the jersey because yeah. the jersey can't i want to take a quick caveat <laughs> why are those jerseys so expensive yeah <laughs> why are they hundreds of dollars That's a fair point for a jersey it's because they know they can make boo boo oh bucks on God. them because they make them look all cool and they're like you're gonna pay 159 yeah, oh for my this. God. and of course we're like so expensive 
How much does that color <laughs> cost? It's twice as much. Swipe my card. <laughs> I hate yeah. It. Anyways, back to what we were talking about. So for me, when it comes to like more adventure stuff or long distance stuff or any any other kind of category of riding, the first thing I think about is like my comfort level. Mm -hmm. Like people don't realize, but gear has to be comfortable. You can wear the most protective stuff if you can't operate the motorcycle. There's no point. Like yeah. you can't get the feel out of it. The first thing I look for is the feel in the gloves. Mm -hmm. I need to feel the throttle. I need to feel the brakes. Like. I need to have a really good connection to those. That's a good point. So you know those gloves that have the giant puck here and a giant puck here? I hate those things. Yeah. I'm okay with the three little small pucks. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with that. But not the that. big ones here. Oh, I hate those yeah. things. I'm using, that's where I'm using my hand. If yeah. I'm holding it like this, that lever is going through right on that puck. Yeah. And that is not comfortable. You don't mm -hmm. get any feeling from that. I don't, I, I do understand why they put it there. Slide it. Yeah. I'm not sliding like this for that long <laughs> to justify needing yeah. a puck on my hand. I'm sorry. Yeah. I hate those gloves so my, much. My gloves that I wear on track, they're mostly kangaroo le leather on the palm <gasps> here. You killed a kangaroo? I didn't kill it. Somebody did. Oh. I didn't go out there and, you know, get them myself, but I would because I, I don't Shit. like kangaroos. I only kill cows. Yeah. But anyways... <laughs> <laughs> they're thin right and so you yeah. get a lot of feel but yeah. they, they don't last as long and i know that if you crash them it's like one crash you're done you can't keep crashing in kangaroo like that um well, but actually no you can so my old tai chi had kangaroo it, was it all kangaroo yeah oh and you it can keep crashing it oh, i have cool. like 10 crashes oh that's awesome yeah, yeah. No, i always sick. i always thought kangaroo would just mm -mm. okay no it's actually very uh uh abrasive resistant it's, nice. it's actually very good yeah, yeah cool yeah. Just so you know, for the, the one leather, just keep buying gloves. <laughs> the one, the one leather that I think is weird that they advertise sometimes. They're like, yeah, stingray leather, and I'm like, what the, that's so what extra. The fuck? It's like, so extra. <laughs> it's so, got my made of crocodiles, buddy. Yeah, it's like, what the hell is going on here? Um, that's so extra. Yeah. So well, yeah, like I was saying, the first thing I look for is that comfort. I want to make yeah. sure that I can use the gear and it feels good to ride in. And then from there, it's like temperature is a big consideration for me we live in one of the hottest states in the country so for me it's like whatever gear i'm wearing i mean i was complaining to you earlier today i was like i'm getting used to this air back because it's hot you know <laughs> like hot. i'm wearing two jackets basically yeah, and you know I, and i get to take my jacket off you're taking your second taking jacket, second off. jacket <laughs> off yeah but i'm willing to do that for the protection it offers yeah. you know like we recently saw um that young man nigel who crashed his zx4 he was wearing all of his gear and you know that gear did a good job because all he walked away from that and impaling a tree being sore his shoulder hurt a little bit i was like dude you got super lucky yeah so the 100%. gear works 100 percent. and like just like bikes gear is if you want it to be good in something you're going to have to sacrifice in something else mm -hmm. you are sacrificing your comfort mm -hmm. for more protection yep i'm not willing to make that sacrifice right now <laughs> yeah. of course i technically will whenever i get a leather jacket i'll yeah. probably end up wearing that most of the time mm -hmm. and help sacrifice comfort for protection yeah so it's always a give and take it's something is not going to be until they if someone makes it perfect in all of those categories yeah they're gonna make some money but yeah, until then, someone can make like a paper thin airbag system it's like wow you're that about breathes to be, really well that, that's and breathable and abrasive. perforated yeah. and it is abrasive yeah. or or like when you go down it hard up or something because yeah. it signals like an electrical and chain and then that somehow activates. it's water resistant yeah like, like <laughs> you're like sick. if it does all that it will give you cancer it'll just have like asbestos in it and just like kill you or whatever health benefits go down <laughs> yeah but the comfort and the protection. environmental <laughs> catastrophes go way up but yeah. this is really good material <laughs> weapons grade yeah, stuff with, military grade with that type of stuff yeah yeah what do you what do you not wear in certain circumstances so let's what do say I not wear obviously there's gloves all different lines of gloves so for our purposes street riding yeah what do you if someone came up to you like i have this gear and immediately looking at that gear you would say absolutely not what is that gear for me on street, I think gauntlet gloves are crazy overkill, and I just they, overkill. they limit my mobility a lot. Mm -hmm. I, ju I just don't like the way they work. I don't I don't like gauntlet gloves on street for personally. Me, so glove, we can do this category by category. But for gloves, if you're wearing like dirt gloves oh, or no, like Walmart yeah. work gloves no, 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 as no. your gloves, crazy, absolutely not. No, no, no. The no. minimum I need to see is like the uh, the leather one that goes right here. You just mm -hmm. like pull it to make it tight right here. That's the bare minimum. Yeah. That I that for me I need to see or have 
to to ride yeah. on the street for me. For me, the boots are a big one. Uh, mm-hmm. And you've seen, I always wear the SMX V2s. Yeah. I that I like having a big proper boot. Mm-hmm. I feel really weird wearing just like like the ones you have, the smaller just yeah. ankle resistant one or just like sneakers. So for me, it's like I gotta have the boot. Yeah. I, I can't do no boot. For me, I just. I th- my boots are a bit loud and a bit extra to be wearing on the street. <laughs> they do match Look, my I'll, bike now, though. I was just about to they say. match my bike. So you're big on matchy-matchy. So if you get some orange gear, you I will just, do it. I did buy those orange shoes for that. Mm-hmm. I did do that. I was like, bike, shoot, done. <laughs> That's why I got the wallet. I'm going to get the Cardo. You're getting the KTM Cardo. I can't We're wait done. to see that in person. I'm like, oh my God. You'll probably be it. like, all right, it's pretty cool. <laughs> 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 oh, wait, hold on. Just, be, just in case the viewers don't believe me. He has an orange wallet. I it's, got... <laughs> it's ridiculous. And he, you showed me the orange shoes that he bought. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not, one I'm not a simp, bro. I'm, yeah. I've been telling you, I'm not a simp. You were talking about this <laughs> earlier, but for me also, um, the half helmet, quarter helmet, mm-hmm. but yeah. all that bullshit, no. It's a full face or nothing for me, personally. For, so I'm looking at the, the scooter squid people. Mm-hmm. Three quarters, okay. But that's fair. I don't know why on a scooter it feels okay. It feels okay. <laughs> it, it, you're like, I'll be all right. It's fine. <laughs> but beyond that, if no matter what, if you're a beginner starting to ride, I don't care what bike you're on. God, I have a full friend face. that wears a full face helmet on his cruiser. Wear a freaking full face. It's a full because face. Because guess what? You can hear your music better anyways. Yeah. Put a cardo system in there, or so whatever system you want to put in there. It's quieter. You just, no bugs are getting in your face. It's just did you better. did you start using a Cardo when you worked here? You didn't use one before, right? Uh, we use Cardos before here. Yeah. Oh, okay, the cool. old old Cardos. The old ones, no, yeah. I never bought one, and I used to sell them when I used to work. Uh, oh yeah, nice. Yeah. But I, for me, when I first put one inside of my helmet, it was like I was blown away. I was like, this is so cool. Yeah, I could talk to my buddies and I could like listen to music. It's I was like, better instead of this is. Bit- we've had it at the track. We're just like. <laughs> yeah, just screaming at each other. Just, just random people were like, why are they yelling yeah. so loud? They They're right hear. there. Yeah, can't hear shit. Both wearing earplugs, bikes loud, mm-hmm. just yelling for no reason. Oh, yeah. speaking of gear, that's one total non-negotiable for me is earplugs. So mine didn't used to be on the street until recently. I don't know why. Yeah. Maybe because I have the custom ones. But for some reason, those foam push-in ones... Either either they're too deep for me or not deep enough, mm. you know. So I got mine custom and I I love them. Yeah. I have my pink set that I use mostly for street riding, which are a little looser than I preferably like, which is why I have my tighter ones for racing. Yeah, because I want that tight fit. I want it to, you know, I want only that noise getting mm-hmm. in basically. So yeah, what's cool about earplugs and people think is like, oh, you won't be able to hear anything. It's like you can hear a lot. You can hear most. Once things. you get used to it, at first, yeah, yeah, I absolutely. You probably can't hear anything because you're not used to it. Yeah. But after you get used to reading people's body language and the reading their lips and stuff like that, I can wear them all day long yeah. and talk just fine. Mm-hmm. Race cars can be going by or stuff like that. I can still have a conversation with you yeah. because I'm used to it. Yeah, yeah. So I actually really like the feeling of like dampening all the sound. Mm-hmm. It's nice. Just all of it. Just yeah. Oh, everything just now. goes down. Everything's quiet. Yeah. yeah. It's like a noise canceling headphone. Mm-hmm. It gets you in the zone. Yeah. Just, I, know, I like it. Brandon, anything else on gear? I think we've covered I most think, of it. I think we covered most of yeah. it. I think we're pretty good on gear. The long and the short of it, guys, is wear gear. Wear uh, your gear. Preferably buy it on <laughs> yammynoob.co. We sell a bunch of great gear, but um, even if you don't, just wear some good gear, and I will love you. But if you're out there riding no helmet, being doing dumb stuff... Like we saw earlier. T- yeah. Tiss, tiss. Don't be doing yeah, that. Don't know. Watch your gaming now!